What is in determinate beam? Is this beam in determinate or determinate? This beam is fixed at the left end, which has three unknowns, one moment, two forces. In total, in general, two-dimensional problems, we have three equations. So three unknowns, three equations, I can solve that. So this is the terminate beam. What about this beam? This beam has one extra unknown on the right side because that is restrained by a ruler support. So here we have four unknowns, and four unknowns cannot be solved using three equations. So we call that indeterminate beam. So generally, if we have more than three reaction forces, the problem would be indeterminate. We can define a number, we can call that as number of indeterminacy, which is the number of reactions over three. If we have four reactions, the number of indeterminacy would be one. If we have five reactions, the number of indeterminacy would be two, and so forth. For each redundant reaction, we call that redundant sometimes. For each redundant reactions, we need to write down one compatibility deformation. Let me consider this problem. How I can solve this? Similar to the concept that we just reviewed, we need to release uh, that redundant reaction and replace that with a force, which in this case is the reaction force at B in the Y direction. Then I will split this structure into two parts and determine deformations at the point where I released my structure. So these two structures for this case are first this one, which is a cantilever beam subjected to the original load. And I need to determine deformation on the very right end of that. I will call that delta 1. The second beam would be the same beam, but now this is subjected to this uh, reaction force, By. We can determine how much is the deflection of this beam at that point. Now, what would be the compatibility of deformation here? What is the deformation of the original beam at point B at the right end of this structure? It's zero, because that is restrained by a pen, by a ruler. So that is zero. That means that delta 1 plus delta 2 are equal to zero. And here, to be correct on sign, because I one of them goes upward, one of them goes downward, I can, it's better to write down delta 1 minus delta 2 is equal to zero. Or, so that is the compatibility of deformation. Let me solve a problem. We have this beam, which is fixed at the left end, and there is a ruler support at the right end. <clears throat> this beam is subjected to load P at the middle. Um, as we discussed, we will release this beam at the right end, and we replace that by one unknown force. Then we can split this structure into two parts. The first part is here on the left top figure, the beam which is subjected to external load, the cantilever beam subjected to external load, and the second beam would be the right top, which is the beam subjected to reaction force. Then we need to determine deformations at the point we have released our structure. In this case, it's at point B, on the very right part of this structure. Let me first consider top left figure. I will get to the table and see what equation should I use. That would be case number eight. And I need to determine V max, because that would be the maximum deformation at the right end. That is the point that I need to determine the deformations at. So that would be 5 PL cubed over 48 EI. Deformation at that point is 5 PL cubed over 48 EI. For the second case, that would be a similar problem, but it is subjected to a load at the right end of that. If I go to table, the deformation at that point would be PL cubed over 3 EI. So deformation for that case would be force L cubed over 3 EI, and force is BY in this case. What is the compatibility of deformation? That would be deformation delta B in the first case, which is shown by VB, plus deformation in the second case, which is shown by V prime B, should be equal to zero. So that is compatibility condition. And if I plug the values that I obtained before into this equation, 
I will get reaction force equal to 5 16th P. And I'm done with this problem. Once you determine that reaction force, the rest unknown forces can be determined using equilibrium equations. For instance, some of the forces in y direction should be zero. So AY plus BY should be equal to P. Okay? BY is 5 16th. So how much would be AY? 11 16th. How much would be AX? Some of the forces in x direction should be zero. So AX is equal to zero. How much would be the moment? Sum of moment about A is equal to zero. That gives me BY times L minus P times L over 2 should be equal to zero. So I can determine though. So these are the values of AX, AY, and MA. All right, I want to give you one algorithm to solve these kind of problems, which we call them indeterminate means. The first step, releasing the redundant support and replace that with a reaction force, which in this case is BY. So that would be our structure. That is the released structure. The top structure is the original structure, and the bottom one is a released structure. The second step would be splitting our release structures into simpler parts. In this case, there are just two loads acting on this beam. So one would be cantilever beam subjected to uh, concentrated load P, and the other one would be the cantilever beam subjected to reaction force. So these are two uh, splitted beams that we have. Step number three would be determining deformations at the point that we have released our structure. In this case, is at the very right end. So I will determine delta 1 at that point for the first beam, and delta 2 for the same point but in the second beam using the any way that I know. For instance, I can use the values provided in the table. In step number 4, which is the core of this problem, we need to write down the compatibility of deformations. In this case, because there is a ruler support, the compatibility of deformation stand means that the value of total deformation at that point should be equal to zero, because that in the real structure, it is restrained by a ruler. So I apply the compatibility condition, and I can determine that reaction force from that equation. And once I determine that, I can determine remaining our reaction forces using the equilibrium equation. So these are five steps that you need to take to answer and determine bending elements. Any questions? Let me solve this problem using another method. Look at the first step. Where we need to release a redundant reaction supports. I said that the redundant reaction is on the right side. Can I consider another of these four as a redundant reaction? Yes, we can. Technically, we can consider any one that we want. For this case, we can't consider AX because AX already is zero because we know that there is not any force in the X direction, so that doesn't give me an extra equation. But I can release either BY, AY, or MA. I can release any of them that I want. For this problem, let me use another method. Let me use another technique to solve the same problem. But instead of releasing BY, I would like to release MA. I would like to release the moment. Okay? If I release the moment at that point, it means that I remove that fixed support and replace that with something that doesn't have any moment, internal moment. What is that? That would be a pen support. Okay? But I need to take care of that moment by applying one extra unknown moment. So I will call that MA. And remember, I don't know how much is that. I don't know how much is the value of that MA. Okay? Before going further, can you tell me what compatibility condition should I consider for this case? Remember, for the first case, we consider the deflection at point B. In this case, I think deflection doesn't help me because... In this beam, deflection is zero at this point and zero at that point. So it is already zero. So I should consider another parameter. What is that? What should I have for this beam to make this beam equal to the original beam? Slope of this beam at that point should be zero. That is the, the compatibility equation. So we need to determine the slope of this beam. We don't need to determine deflection of this beam. 
okay so let me solve this problem this is the release structure over here that is the first step second step would be splitting that release structure into simpler parts here there would be two forces acting on the simply supported beam and i split that into two parts on the top left figure we have a simply supported beam subjected to external load and on the top right figure we have the simply supported beam subjected to a moment okay and remember we need to determine slope of this beam at point a I will get back to table to see what uh, equation we should pick up from. For the first case, I will consider case number one. And the slope of this beam is PL squared over 16 EI. For the second case, I have to consider row three, which is a simply supported beam subjected to a moment. Which one should I use, theta one or theta two? We have to use theta one because this is slope of beam where the moment is applied in this case is ml over 3 ei please write it down somewhere so theta in the first case would be pl squared over 16 ei and in the second case would be ml over 3 ei and as you mentioned the compatibility condition says the theta a plus theta prime a should be zero once i plug the values and solve it for a moment i will get this value for a moment which is 3 16 times pl is it similar to the one that we got before using the other method or it's different from that? It's exactly the same. So it doesn't matter what method you are using for solving a problem. You should come up with the same number. Okay, now let me solve another problem numerically because that was solved parametrically and sometimes it's confusing what is unknown, what is known. So let me solve another problem. The solution of this problem is not provided here. Go ahead and try it by your own.